Welcome to your greatest life. Hello and welcome back friends. I'm Dr. Kevin Dragana and welcome to Unwinding Stress. Where we're, we're empowering you by showing you techniques and today we're talking about fascia. And we have uh, Elle Honeycutt with us today and we're gonna be talking about what fascia is, why it's important to pay attention to, how it affects your everyday life and, and some insights about what to do and techniques that are out there and how Elle helps people through uh, working with the fascia. And uh, what's important for me, one of the biggest things that uh, turn my focus to the fascia was exactly what L does is release trauma and the uh, the phrase I love to share with people is the issues are in the tissues and it couldn't be more impactful when it comes to the concept here of fascia so L thank you for joining us um, I appreciate uh, your time here tonight and if, if you could share a little bit about your story how you got into um, uh, what you're doing with fascia, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what that is. Thank you so much, Kevin, for having me. Yes, uh, I have been involved. I discovered, oh my gosh, fascia like less than a year ago. And uh, prior to that, I was, you know, I'm 33 now, and historically, I got a you know, a degree in business management. I worked as a project manager in the corporate world for a long time. And then I moved over to teaching children. And after that, I was like, okay, I'm ready to work with the body. And so as I go on this journey to start working with the body, I just started studying like personal training. And in that pursuit, I discovered the human garage, which is where I learned about fascia, what it is, and more importantly, like how to work with it and how to program it to help us release restriction. Well, if, if you could share a little bit, a bit more about the human garage. So for those that are unfamiliar with the human anatomy, we have our bones and our muscles. We have our ligaments and tendons. I believe many people are are aware of this, but fascia itself is a is a network that goes around. It penetrates. It, it's a, it's a network. It's like a net. I was just telling someone it's like a spider web throughout the entire body. Uh, share a little bit about human garage and the concept of what fascia is. That's really a really good uh, definition as well. Fascia is a web of structural hydraulic tubes, which are intelligent. Whenever the body has any sort of experience, it is stored in our fascia. So uh, if you have followed people like uh, Peter Levine, Dr. Peter Levine, or Dr. Bessel van der Kolk in the 90s, they both did a lot of research where they were able to determine that the body does store and hold trauma. But take that a step further, the body's storing and holding emotions, and I like to say experiences, just in general. And I believe that the location where that is held is actually in our fascia. And I was able to come to this information over after like studying for a year with the human garage. And so you can find them humangarage.net, but essentially they're uh, a, an organization that provides self-healing techniques for to basically remove restriction from the body or stress or, you know, trauma, et cetera. Well, it, 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 you know, the human garage, when I began to investigate, I got to, I got to say, I've only investigated you know, a small amount and I tried some of their maneuvers. And what I remarked upon was in my uh, studies outside of fascia in, in structural correction in chiropractic and work on releasing cranial bones and meninges, these fascia maneuvers directly correlate with movement patterns that I observe in the correction process where people uh, unwind. And I found that when I did certain types of soft tissue maneuvers, from applied kinesiology and otherwise, that's when a lot of the structure correction could suddenly uh, take a leap in a positive direction. And I, I began to see the fascia as, as itself holding the structure in certain places. And uh, that, that's what, you know, uh, for those, I'm gonna t tell a little side story. Elle and I met each other uh, studying another method that kind of connects all of this, uh, center point meditation, <clears throat> but um, uh, the, the fascia, yes, I believe, and I think this is what Chinese medicine talks about, is this is where these emotions and traumas are, st are stored. So wh when people work with you, Elle, uh, wh what does that look like? Uh, there's different, 
And I'm still learning different things about the fascial world, but there's different techniques, there's different insights. What do you do? How do you work with people? That's such a thank you. That was so well said, Kevin. You have such a great understanding of it. Uh, so I really appreciate your presence here. But what I specifically do with people, it can go two different routes. A, I host a lot of free classes where I just take people through these basic fascial maneuvers. And there's uh, this one thing that we call the stress reset. And it's three basic fascial maneuvers, which hits every zone in the body. It's going to hit your whole body and essentially releasing every like uh, every typical restriction point. If you've ever done um, any kind of yoga, maybe uh, the sitting or the happy baby pose, you'll find oftentimes people have really deep emotional releases when they uh, from their hips, because it's often said that several emotions are found in our hips. And so that's what this this basic stress reset does. And so we challenge people to essentially to do this stress reset twice a day for 28 days to help to unwind the habitual cycle of of stress patterns in the body. And um, but what I do is so I teach uh, I teach free classes. But what is my favorite thing that I do is working with people one on one. And in those one on one sessions, I I essentially personalize a fascial routine specific to their needs. And some people they're coming with, you know, like, uh, you know, specific uh, personal things or health issues that they want to work on. And we'll work together for a series of weeks. And each week, what I'll do is design a specific intense routine for releasing restriction and uh, trauma or whatever. And then I'll provide them with a daily, like these are the three things that you should do that would work best for your situation. And then the other side of it is teaching yoga teachers and uh, energy workers. Those have been kind of the main people I've been working with, how to incorporate fascia into their uh, their businesses and into their own um, their own practice. And I love that you mentioned center point meditation because I feel that once first I discovered fascial maneuvers and then I learned center point meditation and adding that adding center point the techniques that center point brings to each of my fascial maneuvers and i'm leaning because that's kind of part of the beauty of uh center point you essentially lean (laughs) i call it a leaning meditation to people who have never heard of it Mm. but adding center point techniques to the fascial maneuvers uh, just really amplifies the effects so I think, does that answer your question? Well, yeah, yes, you know, you're helping me understand how you work with people specifically. And actually, I didn't really know that that's how you, you worked. And, and the, other, the other side of the coin from releasing trauma, you know, we all have had uh, uh, ups and downs in life. We all have expectations that didn't plan, pan out. We have perspectives that we, we wish for. We have hopes and dreams. But there's this other side of the coin I see, and it's and it's this idea of helping people be their best version. So, like the idea of hitting a glass ceiling, you can't get by it. And this is where I, I, I for me personally, I, I want to spend my time unlocking these patterns in my fascia. I, I look at fascia and the work that you're talking about as like um, like body language when. When I'm having a bad day, my, you know, my posture is round, my head's down, you can see the expressions on my face. But we're talking about yeah. every bone, every muscle, every organ, every gland is interconnected through these, these patterns of, of fascia connections. Um, yeah, you know what is so interesting about that too is that our entire circulatory system and our nervous systems are both held within our fascia. And so that means essentially that the things that move oxygen and electricity throughout our body is held within our fascia. So any sort of experiences, so our brain, our nervous system, uh, essentially, how do I word this? That Oh, when I think it's Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, I love that guy, obviously, second time I'm talking about him here. Right. He says that when the body feels safe, the mind will follow. Yeah. And I love that concept of first coming um, into our body and then, or, you know, addressing our body, putting it in a safe container, releasing restriction. I keep using that terminology because it applies to so many different areas of our life. Then the brain will follow and to touch on that point, 
meaning the brain will follow meaning our thoughts mm. and the way we speak to ourselves and the way we think about our life our perceptions will all change and that is like beautiful and so i appreciate how you touched on essentially self-actualization mm. and you know maybe we can be fully healthy and i think that was a little bit of my story is i was very healthy i was very fit you know i was exercising frequently i had a strong group of friends i uh, you know, I had things going for me and I started doing the fashion maneuvers and all these things from my past started coming up and I finally was able to start working through those things. And now, and I discovered the fashion maneuvers a year later, now I am finding, I am so much more aligned with myself and like my deepest desires, my needs, um, I am no longer experiencing the level of stress that I used to experience. I'm not having the negative thought patterns that were holding me back. And I'm finally starting to achieve dreams that I like set for myself in my back when I was like 19 years old. And I think the things that were holding me back were these uh, restrictions in my body and this restriction in my thought patterns and the way I perceived myself. And I feel that all that stuff was released whenever I started, uh, you know, as you so eloquently put, started releasing the, um, you know, stress and trauma from the body. Well, it, it, it reminds me of this concept of as above, so below. So in our oh. mind, we, we have to remember the concept that we are using 100% of our brain. People think 10% of our brain, but that's what's conscious. And that, that may be uh, questionable as far as that level of percentage. However, the rest of the, the brain, the rest of the power, subconscious and, and otherwise have described, there's a, there's a continual connection of communication in, in multiple dimensions. There's the nervous system, there's the endocrine system, the hormone system, it's like another, uh, that people call them, the, it's the peptides, and that has a whole communication. Though there's this other level um, I believe one doctor, uh, one researcher I follow called it protonicity, and it's a different than, than the heartbeat that through the EMF, uh, excuse me, through the EKGs and the EEGs, uh, the standard testing that we get for our heart and our brain, and, and we know the body's electromagnetic, but there's these other levels of energy going on or detectable uh, to different scientific instruments. And more and more we investigate this, more we see the effects of like uh, hands-off healing, biofield healing, and, and, and that is seeming what's integrating and, inter, uh, and doing the work between the non-physical and physical is the fascial system. And like you said earlier, it has an intelligence. And this just speaks so true to the philosophy that I've come to know through chiropractic and the holistic healing methods there. Um, so, Elle, what we're going to do, if you, go, if you don't mind, we're going to go to break real quick. We'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, fascia and interesting things in life and how it all connects. Sound okay? Excellent. Let's do it. All right. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Come join us on April 25th at the Wall of Love and Hope as we fight to keep families together. Only you can make this change happen. Welcome back, everybody. And there's a quote I want to share with you 
that I have on business card, and it's called Health is the First Wealth. And this got, it got me thinking years ago that regardless of how much money somebody earns, there's these moments in life that if they're unable to move, they're unable to think clearly, they're unable to move, go about life in the manner that they choose, well then, are they really living? And so that is when I found that quote, health is the first wealth. And from that point forward, I have dedicated my own self to my own healing journey and finding techniques and uh, insights that continue to build a well-rounded approach to what it is to be a human being and to navigate that to, so I could express and live the life that I really want to live. And um, so Elle, I want to bring it back to you today. And, and I was just remarking uh, over the break about how, not knowing that you really got into this about a year ago and, and how you got into it for a career, but it's turned into a personal transformation process for you, which is so intriguing for me. I'd love to help people and guide people through that. And you know, we've been, you and I have been meeting here uh, on a weekly basis for a few months through that Centerpoint work, and I, I had no idea that you were not investigated uh, in these, these concepts and practices much longer than a year. Um, so, yeah. I, you know, what, 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 what would you say to others that have yet to really embark on this the, these type of uh, search for information and, and healing or, or, or anything of that matter, and, and, and here you are a year later and you've had this whole experience. So what would you say to others that are maybe just investigating or have a general interest in things like this? Oh my goodness. You know, uh, one thing that I underestimated was how quickly life can change and how quickly life can change even for the better. Like I, oftentimes when we hear that, we think, oh, you know, like everything can be turned upside down, you know, in a snap, but it can also go the opposite way. If everything can be turned upside down in a snap, that has to mean like logically, everything can also just perfectly align in a snap as well. And I'm not saying that's exactly what happened for me, but if I were to say one thing to people, it would be like, your whole life can change in, in a moment and it can change for the better, like in a direction that you want it to go. Don't underestimate like how quickly uh, life can go the direction that you want it to go whenever we become aligned inside. And so my story is, I, <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh because <laughs> it was actually really hard to, manage in the time but uh, I was in a I was in a relationship I'd been in that relationship for five years and I thought we were going to get married all these things uh and then I started doing the fascia maneuvers and I started center point meditation and I started meditating very just like simple things that I was doing at home by myself for free with I knew nothing. I did not know anything about like the spiritual community or um, uh, everything that you know as a chiropractor. I did not have that background at all. And um, I, I noticed that uh, as I began to essentially, the way I see like the body and the mind connection is that whenever we have an experience, especially an adverse experience, there are kind of like layers of restriction put on us. And as I began to peel back and release those really layers of restriction, I could see me uh, more clearly. And the more clear I became to myself, the more clear I became to the external world. Mm. And so everything um, as that clarity arrived in my life everything else that did not align with my highest self or that clarity um, began to fall away in miraculous ways that were painful at first but um that there's this like old book uh by oh gosh i don't want to misquote it's called anti-fragile and essentially it's like this concept of like as humans uh, we can go through difficult experiences and we can become stronger and that was the case is because i felt like i just had a lot of faith in life in the universe and i guess maybe even in myself and i just kept working i knew it's like okay if i just meditate there's something like there's a lesson here to be learned and um and anyway, that process led me to like studying a lot, connecting with people like yourself and just 
absorbing as much as I possibly can. And so now a year later, I'm super excited. I'm going to be moving to a beach in a foreign country where they speak Spanish, which is something I've like always wanted to do. And uh, I have my own business now, which I did not have a year ago. And um, it's just uh, really exciting um, what's happening. And it really all started with me just kind of tuning into myself. Well, congratulations. And uh, you know, in your story right there, I heard the, some of the major premises of uh, how to apply this law of attraction to bring about a better life kind of concept was, was number one, faith. You, you knew that something was going to happen in a positive way. Maybe not that how or what, or what exactly it was going to play out to be, but you, you continued to do that work. And, and you just continued to step forward and life kept bringing you those things and those opportunities and those actions that you continued to make, continued to grow, put it together and here you are, you're making a, a chapter change or perhaps a whole book change, so to speak. That's a, 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 ideas of life. Okay, so now with that being said, this, this idea of our limitations contained in our thoughts, contained in our mind, contained in our perceptions. So let's bring it back to the fascia here. And I know you've been working with clients, uh, you've been helping people uh, do this work, and, and I believe that you have uh, some people you've worked with that you could share a story or two with us. That would be, that would be uh, amazing. Well, I think that uh, Miss L is uh, on a little freeze there with uh, the Zoom. And, uh, you know, that's the nature of technology in today's world. We are in an energetic environment. We are energetic creatures, and we are in an energetic world that's constantly in change and constantly in flux. In fact, one of the most uh, difficult fears is the, is the fear of change, and, and that itself produces a certain field of vibration in our body. There is a wonderful body of, uh, of information, and it's the uh, studies of Professor Emoto, uh, and um, where we, where he, they had uh, monks pray uh, the word love on a uh, on a glass of water, or and they had monks pray and meditate uh, on the, the concept of hate on uh, the water, and that th those. Those, uh, those vials, those glasses, those, those, uh, those cups of water, when they froze them, they produced different shapes. And the ones that was hate had looked like this shattered glass. And of course, if you can think about the concept of love, it had this beautiful picture and arrangement. And every, every word, every state of conscious has an associated uh, pattern. And when they're on the scale of these positive vibrations, and you know those words, you know those feelings, they produce these beautiful images. And so uh, L, I believe, is back. And L, what I was just sharing with them is Dr. Uh, Professor Emoto's work when they froze the water after meditating love or hate or any number of words, and how that, uh, when they froze that water, the, the pattern from the crystals of, uh, in, the, in the ice, they form beautiful shapes or, or jagged, shattered glass shapes based on the tone and the vibration. And I was relating that to the human body and how when we hold those subconscious and old issues from our past in our body, it produces a function that is congruent with health or it results in some type of uh, this, this organized uh, process which we, look, we call disease or disease or sickness or illness. So uh, welcome back, Il. Thanks for bearing with the technology. And um, I think we we're just asking you about a client um, so if you could uh, share a little bit more about uh, what you're about to sh uh, say there. Thank you. Yes, uh, and that was really, that's such a great analogy. I, I know this, the experiment you're talking about, and it, there's one client that kept coming to mind when you asked me that question, and we're going to call her Sarah, that's her, not her name, but um, Sarah was working with me for, she bought like a, a month long package. She wanted to meet once a week for a month. Same thing, you know, like we have our intense healing sessions once a week and then she would integrate that uh, integrate that throughout um, her week with this daily routine I created for her. And uh, one session, which was fascinating, was this, um, we were specifically working on the thyroid and we were just kind of releasing some trauma in that specific area 
essentially just by like, we're releasing the fascia in that area because she was finding, so if you follow, you know, other various forms of uh, holistic healthcare, um, she was finding that she was having a difficult time sharing her truth in life. Mm. And she wanted to kind of release any sort of restriction around the throat. And so that's what we were focusing on that day. And so we're releasing, we're opening it up and suddenly her whole, her legs start shaking uncontrollably, like kicking, you know, like if you're sitting on the edge of a pool and you're just like kicking your uh, feet in the pool, her legs started kicking. And she, what happened was she remembered this, uh, this experience from her past, she was, you know, over 40 years old, uh, this experience from her past where she had been um, choked and she had, it was very, very traumatic. So, you know, trigger warning, um, maybe tune away if this is uh, too much for someone, but she had been lifted off the ground and her feet were kicking. And I found that to be in, like fascinating because her body essentially, in her release of that, her body started to uh, reenact the experience or the traumatic experience. And this like aligns with other trauma work that I have studied with uh, Peter Levine. We talked about him earlier, how whenever an animal after having been like you know scared by a predator once it stops it'll shake because it's releasing the trauma and the stress of the intense experience of being hunted by a predator and so going back to this woman her body had to like act out that was what she needed i guess the i believe the body has a wisdom and if we allow it, it will guide us towards healing. And so in that moment, her legs started kicking and shaking and then they stopped and we were both like, wow, what just happened? And so, uh, so you know, I we did some things just to kind of, you know, like uh, integrate things and she, took an Epsom salt bath, went for a hike in nature, you know, did some meditation, took care of herself. And as that experience integrated, <laughs> she um, she was in this relationship where she was unable to like not unable I don't like that terminology where she was learning how to how to speak her truth in that particular relationship and it's one she'd been in for a while it wasn't a romantic one it was a, a work relationship and so uh, a week later she was uh, she comes back to our weekly sessions and she shares how that week later like four days after that very intense session and all the sessions are not like that but that one in particular was <laughs> um how she was able to stand up and ask for this thing that she'd been wanting and stand up kind of like essentially create some boundaries in her life so that she could grow expand all those kinds of things. Well, I'm going to interrupt your story. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fascinating and, and a beautiful thing, and I agree 100% with you that the body did have to express this. But we are out of time for today. And for those that want to dive more into Ella's work, please visit her uh, websites and go reach out to her, and she can help you with uh, processing what's going on in your life. I'm Dr. Kevin Jarena, and this has been Unwinding Stress. We'll see you next week.